This is part two in our series of videos of how to configure and use DocsMS Push Publishing in version 2.5 and above. We still have the same setup as we did before in the first part of the video. We have an Internet Explorer window here running in, on a Windows server, and this server is using MySQL as the database. In addition to that, here in Chrome, I'm running a server here on my Mac, and it is using Postgres as the database. So these are not hooked up at all to one another. We're going to see now how to take the environments we've already configured and push content between them. So what I'm going to do is create a new piece of content. Let's just create some basic content, generic content. We're going to say My Content for Push. And here we're going to say my body of the content. Or maybe we'll say the body of the content. And we will save and publish. So this piece of content does not exist on the other side. It does exist, however, on this side. And just as a proof of concept, let's come over here. We can see here the last thing to be edited is this theme. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here and push publish. Now I am seeing this push publish option and this add the bundle option because I have an enterprise license. In addition, I see the push publish option because I have configured environments. Without environments and servers configured, you won't see this. Remember that when we push publish, we are push publishing to an environment. We don't push publish to the individual servers. All that's set up in the configuration that we went over in part one. Now I have a few options here. I can put publish, delete, or publish and delete. A delete means go to the other server and destroy it. Get rid of the identifier. It's not like an unpublish. It's an actual delete from the remote server wherever I'm pushing the delete to. Now I can also state the time I want this to happen. Okay, the delete just, like as we, as we said, this, this is the same, expire or do it on this time. And publish and delete means push it at this time and then delete it during this time. So you could set up maybe like a marketing ad or something. Put this banner up now and remove it here, some kind of a marketing campaign. Now if I have more than one environment selected, I can push to multiple. I only have one configured, so I only get one here. But it is possible to push to this, this to different environments. In addition, I have this force push option. Now, we'll talk more about this later on. You can read more about this in our documentation on .cms.com. The, the force push clears the cache, or it says actually for this push, ignore the cache. What .cms tries to do is when I push the content, .cms says, well, I know that the content requires this structure, and the structure has fields, and maybe it requires the host, and so forth. There's other dependencies that could be required. So .cms will push all of those dependencies. Well, we don't want for every single push to get everything and always push the same thing. We want to control the, the overhead and the load that's happening there. So we cache and remember, what did we push to which environment? So what the force push does is it says, ignore whatever cache you think you have and just push this anyway. I want you to push it and push all of the dependencies that go with it. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and click Save here. That just scheduled a push. Now it runs at the top of the hour. In the .cms25 install in the base starter, under the site browser, we have the tool already added for publishing queue. You could, of course, add this where you want. And here you could see I have a pending uh, item which is the one I had just done. Now soon we're going to see it appear here in the status history. Again, this is going to happen at 349. Now I'm going to hop over here to the other side and also click on the publishing queue. And pretty soon we're going to see the status appear here. And then once that happens, we will also see our piece of content appear which did not appear on or was not on the Windows side before. 
So here I clicked refresh, and you could see seconds ago the bundle was sent. So now I come over here, I click refresh, and okay, he was successful. That's great. I like that. We'll look at that in a minute. Let's go back to the Mac side here. Now, this says bundle sent. In another minute, he's going to run again. And when, when he runs at the, at the top of, at, of each minute, what he says is, do you have any updates for me? He checks the other side, and he says, do you have any updates on things I've already sent you? So this will be updated when my clock hits 350 in this particular case. Right now, all he knows is he sent it. But he's going to get the whole status the next minute, even though it's already done on this side. So let's go ahead and go back to the Content Search Manager. And here you can see I'm sorted by the last edit date because it remembers where I was. And here is my content for push. This is the content we just created on the other end. My content for push, the body of my content. This is what I expected. Here's the history of him. Now, there is one thing to note here. When we do not push our permissions. So what you will get when an item saves to .cms is you will get whatever permissions would be the default permission. So it would be like saving a new item there. So you do need to make sure on your receiving server that the way in permissions inherit is set up. But as long as those things are set up properly, it will it'll just get the permissions it's supposed to get, like creating a new object in .cms. We'll make some future videos here. We'll show how to do the same thing by adding to a bundle and so forth. You'll see that in part three and following.